take a look at a couple of worked examples. In this first example, what we have is we have a 4.16, sorry, a 4.16 kV circuit. And we'll assume that it's supplying initially some residential load. And so the feeder consists of four aught conductors. For four aught, we have a equivalent per phase resistance of 0.592 ohms per phase miles and a reactance of 0.761 ohms per phase miles. Uh, later on in, in the course, we'll show you how to do those calculations. The substation voltage is regulated at 1.04 per unit or 104%. And initially this um, four mile section has a uniformly distributed residential load of 800 kVA at a power factor of 0.9 lagging. And so what we want to do is we want to make use of the K factor approach to calculate the voltages requested. And what we want to do is we want to find the receiving and voltage in um, percent per unit. So th this is the, the circuit, just kind of ignored this new commercial spot load for now. This is what the circuit looks like. Basically, we're regulating this voltage right here at the top of the feeder using a line voltage regulator. We've got uh, four miles. And you could think about if we have 800 kVA net, we've got 400 kVA at the very top of the from the first two miles of the feeder, and we've got uh, 400 kV on the second part of the feeder, which is two miles long. So the, the net length of this is, is going to be four miles. And the reason I'm bringing that up is in, later on, we want to consider the change at, at bus number one, um, or the change due to the voltages due to the additional load at bus number one. So Let's let's go ahead and, and see how we're going to apply the K factors to do this calculation and figure out what this net voltage drop is going to be and, and what bus two voltage is going to be. So we start off by defining the voltage for the circuit. This is 4.16 kV. And remember that when we're doing the K factor calculations, you see voltage in the K factor expression. The way this formula is set up, that's aligned to neutral value. So we have to divide this 4.16 kV by a factor of square root of 3, get 2.4 kV. The power factor is 0.9. So if you take the arc cosine of 0.9, we get the power factor angle. And so if I convert this to degrees, this is 25.8 degrees. Uh, these are the values of the resistance and reactance of that line. Um, per mile. And so when I calculate the K factor, this is going to give me a percent voltage drop per kVA mile. A lot of times what I do, since the K factor is a function of power factor, is I'll put a subscript there of 0 0.9 just to indicate at what power factor that was computed at. Because if I have different power factors, I have to calculate new K factors. And so the K factor is going to be R cosine theta plus X sine theta divided by the line to neutral nominal value squared, all times 1,000 over 3 times 100%. And so if I plug the numbers in this case, um, put in the per unit length line resistance and reactance, then what I get is I get a number for the K factor, which is shown at the bottom. All right. So this shows you how you actually get the K factor itself. Now, once you have the K factor, then to get the percent voltage drop, say, from the top of the feeder to bus two, then we take the equivalent line length times the K factor times the net load. And so if that K factor is 0 0.005, I multiply by the total three-phase KVA load, which is 800. I multiply by the line length. But one thing I have to do in here, since this is a uniformly distributed load, is I've got to divide this by a factor of two. So basically, again, what's happening in this case is almost like half this load was at the top of the feeder and half this load was at the bottom of the feeder as far as doing the voltage drop calculation. And so if the net voltage drop 
is 7.99%. And then I start off with 104% I have at the top of the feeder, subtract off the net voltage drop. And what I get at bus number two is, is roughly 96% of nominal voltage. Now, let's suppose I want to I do a planning calculation and I want to find out what the impact would be of adding another load to the circuit. This is very common. Let's say I have a new commercial load, 300 kVA at a power factor of 0.8, power factor lagging. And I add that at bus one, which is at the halfway point, and I want to get an update for the voltage at bus number two. So there's a couple ways I could work this. I mean, one way I could work with this is I can get this voltage drop from bus one to two, I can get the voltage drop from zero to one, assuming I have a new equivalent power factor. But but the beauty of the K factor approach is it's 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 linear. And so what I can do is I can superimpose the voltage drop due to this new commercial load, the voltage drop that's going to be in addition to what I have already, and they could use this for updating the voltage at bus number two, all right? So I don't have to um, basically redo all, all my work. Basically, I can just superimpose what the effect of the new load is, because again, this is a linear formulation. Uh, so what I need to do is I do need to calculate a new K factor for this commercial load, since it has a power factor of 0.8, I go through the same steps as before. Uh, what we see in this case, it's a little bit higher value. And this is generally what you're going to see is the lower the power factor, the more drop you're going to have across it. And then I'll just calculate the update in the voltage drop from zero to one. This is going to be S times the, the 0.8 power factor, K factor times the, the new commercial load. And note in this case, there's no factor of a half in this case because this is a spot load it's all load we put at that one bus location and so what this is going to do this is going to add an additional 3.23 percent worth of drop and what i simply do is i just simply take what i had before at bus two i superimpose the additional drop caused by the commercial load and i see this goes down to 92.78 percent so what this is telling me is that before I had that commercial load, I, I might have been okay as far as voltage. It was still above 95%. But as soon as I add that commercial load, it dropped below my 95% um, criteria, which means I'd have to do something like look at power factor correction or adding a regulator downstream or something like that uh, in order to compensate for the additional voltage drop caused by that new commercial load. So this is a simple example of applying K factors, and I'll, we'll have other lecture uh, lecturing units later on. We'll have some work examples, and I'll show you how I do this. And so the reason I like this K factor is if you're trying to do, um, look at this stuff like more in a, a course format as opposed to running computer simulations all the time, it gives you a way of actually estimating these voltage drops without having to use a computer tool. Uh, and it gives you a real quick way of, of getting numbers rather than just kind of getting hung up on getting a computer simulation set up. Now, let's look at another example. And this is a, a primary feeder design example, kind of similar along the lines of that planning example I had in the, the previous lecture. And what we're looking at is we're looking at a service area where we have the option of having different voltage levels. And so let's suppose I'm trying to serve a square service area. I'm going to put a substation right in the middle. I'm going to have a fit configuration where I have four feeders coming out where the service territories are going to be this triangular shape. And so I want to look at what would be my options as far as four different classes of voltage. And let's suppose in this case, what I'm limited by is I'm limited by the feeder um, thermal capacity. Let's suppose the feeders can only handle 335 amps. I'm using a certain type of a wire type. 
assuming that I have this conductor impedance on a per unit length, uh, our X is shown here, and assume the load power factor is 0.9. Basically, what I want to figure out in this case is what kind of substation capacity would be required in MVA as a function of each of these different voltage classes. And what would I be looking at in terms of these backbone feeder lengths for the different voltage options? And so this is a kind of a greenfield sort of a problem where I'm assuming that I have different options as far as what voltage I select in this case. So this is the scenario that I talked about before, whereas, you know, you got this service territory and you just simply break this into square segments with the substation in the middle. Assuming we have four feeders, kind of an east, north, west, and south feeder, and let's suppose the load's uniformly distributed in the, in the, in the areas, um, then what we would have in this case is we would have kind of like an equivalent uh, load center or equivalent line length that's going to be given by a, a factor of two thirds. So basically what this is going to look like is it looks like our load is at this two thirds of the of the length of this main backbone feeder. So let's go through one sample calculation and let's start off with the 4.16 kV service. You know, this is a relatively low voltage compared to today's standard, but we still have these types of circuits that are working perfectly fine right now. This, this would have a line to neutral value of 2.4 kV. And if the power factor is 0.9, then you take the arc cosine of 0.9, gives us 25.8 degrees as the power factor angle. Then what I would do is I would, I would calculate the K factor in this case, and I use this line impedance per unit length. Uh, I factor in the cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle, plug in for the line to neutral voltage, and I get the appropriate K factor that's associated with this example, um, voltage service. All right. So, Let's suppose we're limited, sorry, if we're limited by 335 amperes in this case. Then what this means is the net three phase load we could have would be square root of three times the line voltage times the current, which would be 2,414 kVA. That would be the net amount of load that we could actually have in this feeder if we were limited at the top of the feeder by 335 amperes. Now, as far as the line length, I just can't have any sort of arbitrary um, length for the circuit because we're going to be limited by voltage drop, all right? And so if we're looking at making sure that our voltage drop at this particular end of the circuit does not exceed 5%, let's say, then basically if I've got a maximum value for S, and if I'm limiting this fullest drop to 5% and I've got this equivalent load center that's two thirds of the way down the feeder, then basically what I can do is I work backwards and I can figure out, well, what sort of length am I limited to or limited um, by um, if I want to keep that voltage drop within like 5%. And so I'm kind of working this backwards in a way. And that's the beauty of the K factor equation is if I have a voltage drop limit, I could actually work backwards and figure out well, what's, what's the maximum length I can have, right? And so in this case, I'm solving for length. And if I'm limited uh, by a 5% drop to the end of that backbone, then look at this. K factor formula is telling me is that that feeder couldn't be longer than 1.3 miles. So if 1.3 miles is the length of one of the main feeders, and if I have the square service area, basically what I'm going to have is two times 1.3 times two to um, times 1.3. 
basically be this distance squared be the area within the service territory and what I could serve if I have these two limitations on the current level and the voltage drop I, I'm going to have a maximum service territory of 6.8 square miles which isn't really that large right and so if I've got four of these feeders then then basically what I'm going to have for the required substation capacity is I'm going to have square root of three times the line voltage times the current times four. If I want this in MBA, I divide by 10 to the six. And this tells me that the substation capacitor, the size of the transformer I would need um, would be 9.65 MBA. And so in this particular example, if we we're going to stick with this 4 kV class circuit. You know, we have relatively small substation transformers and we wouldn't have line lengths that are really that great in this particular situation. Now, what you could do is you could put this into a spreadsheet. Now, go ahead and um, post this so you guys can have it available. What you could do is you can do these calculations at the 12 kV level, at the 22 or 23 kV level, and the 34 kV level. You go through these same types of calculations and what you can see is if we are limited by the 335 amp restriction um, on our current, that this would actually show you how much load we could supply in each feeder and what this would mean in terms of substation transformer sizes. And you can see as the voltage goes up, basically we go from 9.65 to um, 28.942. Uh, and so what this shows you is we could basically supply um, much larger areas. Um, if you're kind of looking at the maximum square miles, we're going from 6.8 to 61.1 to 205 to 467. We can supply much greater areas as we, we step the voltage up. And if you look at the main feeder length, you see we go from 1.3 to 3.91 to 7.17 to 10.82, all right. So we, we're gonna have a lot more customers, uh, obviously as we go up in the voltage and we can have like longer line lengths and serve greater areas. Now, is this always, the, the best solution to go up with voltage, well, it kind of depends, right? Because there's other things you have to consider. You get up into the higher voltage levels and the components may cost more money for the higher voltage levels. Um, something else you'll see as well is you start running longer feeder lengths is you might start to run into say like reliability issues where if you have, um, say like trees or animals getting into overhead lines, you might expect to have more service disruptions when you have like the longer length of lines. It just, it just kind of depends on the service territory, right? So there's, there's pluses and minuses of going up higher in the voltage levels and in different utilities. You know, when they look at what sort of voltages you use, they take all this into account. They, they look at what their customer load densities are and what this would mean as far as the length of the circuits and the size of the substation transformers. And they, they figure out based on this, you know, what would make sense in terms of service voltages. So um, what we'll do in, in upcoming lectures then is we'll we'll get into how to calculate these these uh, line impedances. We'll get into how to calculate where this value is our, our next come from and we'll look at that for both overhead lines and also underground cables. And then we'll get into voltage regulation in a little bit more detail and um, how if we want to keep voltage within range you know how we would actually go out there and have to place like uh, line regulators and also capacitor banks.